Hey, Quilters, I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilts Cutting Expert. Here I am on the M&Ms, and? I'm Erica Bodker, AccuQuilts Creativity Expert. I'm the short M&M. Right there. Welcome <laughs> to the last part of our Go Row House Runner So Long. Today, we're gonna be providing more customization options. We're gonna add borders and binding. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be talking about quilting techniques, binding methods, and more. That's right. And you have... and. We have Emily, so AccuQuilts right. Community Engagement Specialist. This is the single M&M because she's in the box. Right. There you go. And she is here as moderator to ask us any questions that you have during the show so that we can answer them. Yes. Listen, be sure to ask any questions you have in the comments section from wherever you stream our show. And then Emily's going to read them and she's going to ask us. Yeah, we were good and we didn't eat the snacks last week, so this week we've already eaten some. Yeah, somebody said, hey, why aren't you eating the candy? And I thought, man, that is a good question. That is a good question. Quilters, in case you missed it, the last show for the Sew Along series was part two, Making the Row House Runner. We cut and sewed the house shapes and offered some personalization options for them. And if you missed part one or the introduction, make sure you watch those too. You want to watch them in order. Mm -hmm. Watching each of the so long shows in the correct order gives you extra tips and tricks for the row house runner. So check them out on AccuQuilt's video gallery or Facebook page or YouTube page. That's right. And speaking of Facebook, have you been following along with the hashtag AQSOs on Facebook or Instagram? We have seen such fun things. This hashtag easily, easily lets everyone in the AccuQuilt community see how your row house runner is coming along. So be sure to use it while sharing pictures of your progress on social media. And Eric and I will post ours today. Yes, yes, we'll be posting more. Thank you to everyone who's already shared their progress on their runner. And uh, Miss Emily, do we have any super fun posts to share that you want to highlight? Oh my gosh, I would love to. We have had so many amazing creative okay, projects. This, this one I thought was brilliant because it doesn't have to be long. It could just be a table topper. Oh, yes. Like, and they, I love the I think it isn't long because they haven't put them together, but with their sashing yet. But you no, can put it together all like that. I think there's batting underneath it. No, they're not sewed together yet. Oh, okay. Anyway, we love it. We love this one. <laughs> Despite our, our confrontation here, we love it. Exactly. Next, we have Miss Marge. And well, Miss Marge, look how pretty those well, She's already are. got her whole top done. I love that. Mm -hmm. Those are those 30s reproduction fabrics, fun colors. It's really love pretty. that. So Next, we have Denise T. Oh, my goodness, Denise. Look at that so fun fabric. Fun. And I love that it's just scrappy. Very scrappy. That is perfect. I love how the trees are all the different, you know, different shades. It's kind of just fun windows. Yeah. I just, I love this one. And, and dot grunge at the bottom. Dot grunge. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it indeed. And then finally we have Miss Jillian who oh. has given us the two photos of both her her uh, row houses and then the trees separately. Love the background fabric. Okay. So very, fun. The moon and fun stars. Is you could do a night version and a day version. Oh. oh. Right? In your yes. spare time. Emmy's got to be doing that. All right. Okay. I love those highlights. All right, quilters, it's time to get all of these units pieced together and finish off our runner top. So get started by laying out your units and you want to follow the pattern. Right. I had to call Erica twice yesterday to make sure I was following it correctly. Now, remember, Eric and I were using the Go Mix and Match 12 inch cube right. to make our runners, but this pattern is available with any of our seven sizes of cubes. That's right. Now, that means that the size of everything in your house, from your houses to your tree units to your border strips, is going to vary. So, you need to be sure to refer to your particular pattern for measurements if you're not using the 12 inch. Right. So what you're going to want to do is lay out your units and depending on whether or not you've got your sashing strips on, you may need to sew some sashing strips right. on. And you can see we've got in the ours. We went ahead and put ours together because they're long and they take up a lot of space on the table. All right. So Mr. Greg's going to highlight mine here. So we'll talk about it. Yeah. So here were my houses and my trees and I made my houses all kind of scrappy and my mm -hmm. trees in different order. And then this is the sashing that goes between the right. blocks. And then you want to make sure you press towards that sashing. Right. And the reason exactly. you want to press towards that sashing is because 
like right here you have so many corners. Don't mind me as I cut my threads. Right. Um, so many. You threads. have so many corners. Okay. And then make sure you give it a really good press before we talk about the next steps, which are our borders. That's right. So before we go, Emily, do we have any questions to get before we move ahead? Not as of yet, but okay. as, as always, I am here for any, any audience question. We're All so right. Glad that Emily is we are here. so happy to have her here for this. Okay, now just remember, this is not a race. You don't have to get everything done during the show today. In fact, we had a show last week to make right. the houses. I just sewed them together last night. So, yeah, I mean, we each did one house during the show, right? but then we had to finish our other houses too, so. Right. We want you to be able to relax and sew and really enjoy this process because it's such a fun and easy pattern. That's right, that's right. So you can always go back, remember, you can always go back and watch the videos again. Right. So with Pam and I making the 12 inch size, this is what our runners look like and they're they're pretty long. Um, that remember the size of the borders that we're gonna talk about as we move forward to the next step is gonna depend on the size cube you're using. Right. So you need to, again, be sure to check your pattern. Now, you may have decided to mix things up and do two rows of houses to make some little cottages to go with big houses or made some other changes. But if you're using the 12 inch strip like we are, it's time to cut and sew those border strips. Right. And yesterday, or maybe even this morning on social media, someone was making this and they actually made three rows and the center had like the uh, Northwoods medley shapes. And oh, cute. So they were kind of like log cabins in the woods. And so think about that. Think you about- do so many things with this so pattern. So many things, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is to cut and sew this bottom one right here. This is our bottom uh, border. Right. Now, again, use, refer to your pattern. We use the two and a half inch strip die, which finishes to two inches, and you need to um, sew it together. You just need to cut it into two parts. And here's where I sewed mine together, and I just press my seam open. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Greg. Oh, it's right there in the words. That's okay. So, oh, here, there we, there go. we go. So I press my seam open, okay? Now, I wanna talk about mine for a second because mine has words. They say fun things like yes. look on the bright side, be fabulous. Um, you can never have too much happy, I love it. So this is really directional fabric and I wanted my words to be read correctly. Right. So here's my fabric. And if I were to cut this salvage to salvage, which is usually what we do with strips, right. you're only gonna get like little pieces. And if I turned it here, it would be the wrong direction. Right. right, Okay, so make sure that when you're looking at your bottom border, mm -hmm. if it's directional, make sure that the pieces go the correct way. Right. Like if you had little trees, you would want them to go the right way or whatever. So um, this was, this was a really good experiment for me because I did want to have my words go the right way. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now I discovered when I did mine that by putting the, on the first one, I did a mitered end of my strips. I put them together, those, um, with the, that miter and that angled line and I didn't have quite enough fabric to finish my bottom border. So when I did my second one, yes too, um, I just butted them up next to each other, and that way I too had See right there. It was it was plenty long enough. Erica so just did made a quarter inch. Two seat. of these because she's been writing the blog. Right. So, so how fun is that? So speaking of making two of these, I have been following um, the pattern. It I think calls out using the same fabric for this border border strip as your binding. Right. But I'm following Pam's quilting rule of the year, and I have a stripe for my binding. So do I. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But because I only needed to cut two strips of the brown, I went ahead. I measured my two two and a half inch strips. That was five inches. Right. Added a quarter inch on either side. So I cut just a five and a half inch with the fabric strip, laid it over two of the strips on the die yep. and cut those two strips. Right. And then again, sew the strips together. 
okay? And in a few minutes, we're gonna show you a super cool trick on how to miter corners when we get to yes. the binding yes. section, okay? Right. So just keep in mind that your strips, you wanna make sure you cut them correctly. That's right. Okay? Okay. And you wanna measure your runner before you cut. Yes, don't just sew them and cut it off in the end, because then you're- It could end up being yeah. a little wonky and we just don't like that. Okay. All right, All right, so Erica, now that we've sewn it together and we've sewed it to the bottom, right. how are you going to do the pressing? So you're going to want to press this towards the outside. Right. So again, you press that little seam open, but once it's sewn on, press it towards the outside because that way you're not fighting any seams. And I haven't pressed this one yet, but I will yes. before I go to my next step. So you want to go ahead and press that towards the outside. Okay. All right, so now we need to cut and sew the outer border. Yes. So again, you're gonna follow the pattern directions for the size you're making. Now we're both, again, using that two and a half inch strip die. So we're gonna need a total of six strips, okay? So I'm gonna show you my outer border. Isn't this so cute, Erica? It is so cute. Okay. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut these and then I'm gonna cut some two and a half inch strips. Cause okay, sounds good. All right. So, Emily, while I'm laying out my fabric to show everybody how to pre-cut, do we have some questions? Okay. Um, so, Miss Natalie G is wondering, um, so when you're cutting, how do you prevent threads from getting rough and ragged? Your fab fabric pieces are not at all. Oh, that's because we've sewn them together. So, to keep your pieces from getting ragged, yeah, you they're, really... You really want to start sewing threads. them together. Yeah. Together. That'll really help them keep from doing that. Yeah. Okay. So it's like if you're sewing, you just don't, you don't want them to let them sit out. You don't right. want your fabric. Yeah. Out. Okay. So but here, I'll show you. The more you manhandle them, the more they're going to get thread. Yeah. So see, look right here, my, my fabric's already starting to get raggedy because I cut them and they've just been sitting in a box. Sure. Okay. Okay. Before you tell us the next question, I'm going to show everybody how to do this. So on our strip die, we have three sections of two and a half inch strip, right. which equals seven and a half inches. So I'm gonna just come right here and I'm gonna rough cut, cause I just wanna add a quarter of an inch on either side. I'm gonna rough cut eight inches width of fabric. Okay, all right, so now Emily, we can do the next question. Yes. Um, this, is, this kind of segues into our next segment that we're going into. Um, Megan is just kind of wondering, just some general good tips for using strips as binding. Oh, we're going to oh, talk about we've different got a whole, of We've got a whole section coming we up. Have, Hang with us. We have 18 sizes of strip dies. Yes. You can make whatever kind of binding you want. Okay, so here are my eight inch strips that I'm going to cut two and a half inches. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Now, I always cut my salvage off. Well, you're going to be cutting it off anyway. You're gonna cut it so off anyway, not? so you might as well. And then Erica can keep it. She right. likes to keep the salvage. I do, but I keep the cute ones. Yeah, this is kind of cute. Does it have cute Lori Holt be in it? my bonnet. Yeah. I feel like that's See? a cute one. That is a cute okay. one. Sometimes they have little sayings or, or little designs. Oh, this one has little bees. Dot. See? They have little bees in it, okay. Bees for the different So colors. I'm just gonna chop off my salvage because I'm, I'm gonna cut it off anyway, okay? All right, so let me show you how to lay it okay. on a die. And what are you going to do while I'm doing this, Erica? I am going to press this bottom border okay. down towards the, I was just going to, I should have turned on my iron already, but. And thank you to the team for getting us two irons because yes, so that we, we didn't don't have to share. Right over our irons. All right, Emily, if anything else comes up, you let us know. Yes, I will chime in as they okay. come up. So this is our two and a half inch strip die. I'm gonna show it right here to Mr. Greg. Are we good? Oh yeah, perfect. So it has three sections. Um, hey Brock, our light is off there. Two and a half inch strips, okay? So what I'm gonna do is this uh, black line here, the blades end here and here. So I wanna make sure my fold of my fabric is before that black line. So I will show you here in just a second. I'm just gonna lay it right over, make sure it covers all the blades. Okay, I stopped before this black line. We could cut six layers of uh, cotton fabric. And Erica, how many strips would we have? 
We enough. would have enough to make a queen size binding and that's queen just size. in one pass through the cutter. That's gonna give you nine strips. That's gonna be enough for that queen size binding. I think that's some kind of magic, don't you? Well, I do. And in my lifetime, before I worked for AccuQuilt, I cut so many two and a half inch strips wrong. Oh, You know, yes. your rotary cutter would move and your ruler would move and you didn't get it straight and you get mountains in the middle. You call them dipsy doodles. Dipsy doodles, that's yes. right. Um, the amazing Eleanor Burns calls them uh, puppy ankles. What? Puppy ankles, because puppy, you know, it gets that little corner like puppy ankles. Oh my god! I'd, I'd never heard it before. In my wildest dreams, I never, I, never. Okay, here we go. Eleanor, leave it to Eleanor to come up with puppy ankles. Okay. Oh, speaking of straightening things out, Miss Christina has a question. Hi, Christina. Yes. How do you straighten your trees if they're leaning? I'm working on the four inch size. Oh, you know what? It is really true. You have to be very careful with those four inch, um, the flying geese, because remember with the four, the flying geese that you're gonna make with the four inch cube, those literally are gonna finish at one inch by two inches. Yeah. They're very oh, wow. small. They're so delicate. You, yes, they are delicate. You need a delicate touch. And if you notice that you've got a, a weeping pine, <laughs> Yes, so we be may actually need to violate the no steam ever, and you might want to use a little bit of maybe Spicy. flatten or or uh, best press to spray that and help kind of realign it, right. if you will. Right. Um, and if you've got a wool pressing mat like I'm using here, you could actually even take it and use it kind of like you were blocking a needle point or a knitting project and use some pins to pin it straight and then and spray then press it, it and press it. Yeah. Great question. I yeah. had the same problem. Leaning pine. I had, I had the same leaning pine tree issue when I was dabbling with the four inch for this pattern. All right, so we're gonna pull off two of our strips. Okay so that they are for the size. Yes. Okay, and I'm just gonna sew my strips together, uh, two and two together, one's for the top and one's for the bottom. But I'm gonna measure my um, runner before I sew them on. Oh yes. Right, so right. that we get the right so size. So that you get the right size. And again, I'm not doing anything fancy. I am just, um, so in a straight seam here. I have so many dies over here, Erica, all of a sudden. Well, that's coming up. I know, I'm very excited about it. Yes. How are you doing with that pressing over there? Yeah, hey, I got it all pressed out. Okay. Right. All right, okay. so you, you can, are yeah. gonna sew your ends together. Yep, and you can talk. Okay, I can talk. All right, so <laughs> she's gonna get those done. And again, before you sew any cut, anything, you know what your mother taught you. Measure twice, cut once, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yes. It applies with this as well. So once you get that, those outer borders done, which Miss Pam is working on right now, and I'm gonna kind of fold this one up and put it aside because it's like that cooking show where they pull one that's, that's the already made souffle out yes, of the oven. the kitchen does it all the time. Yes. <laughs> So here is one. Welcome to the kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen. So Brock Pam and Erica's saying, kitchen. Brock and Eric, uh, Brock was saying earlier that we're gonna talk about sandwiches and um, It does sound like, you know what? Here's the thing. A lot of quilting terms sound like food, right? Yes. Two and a half inch strips are? Jelly rolls. Uh, 10 inch squares are? Layer cakes. You would think that all we do is eat because then we talk about fat quarters. Yes. So, and we were talking about quilt sandwiches. So here no. is one with a lot of threads that I still need to trim off of it. And the, I've started putting, I'm trying, I should have pressed this too, the binding on it. You know who uh, dressed up for Halloween the other day as a fat quarter is our friend Anita. Anita. She, she uh, dressed up as a fat quarter. I love it, it was hysterical. She printed off a, uh, a picture of a quarter and wore it around her neck, and then <gasps> she put a pillow in her shirt, and she was a fat quarter. <laughs> love her. It was pretty okay. hysterical. Next yeah. Halloween party, that's me. Know, that's that like, me. that wins for sure. <laughs> well, once you get your border, so do your bottom, do your top, yeah. 
and the measurement's gonna be the same as what you measured your inner bottom border at. Once those are on, measure your sides, sew your border on there, and then do a happy dance because your top is technically complete. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> but what about adding some applique? Yes. Oh. So now is the time before you get to quilting to add that kind of embellishment. So we've got some ideas for some things. Okay, so I'm gonna show them here on my little green mat. Okay. That will work great. Okay, so on Erica's, she could use our circles die and make fun little snowmen. Do you right? wanna build a snowman? Do you wanna build a snowman? And then she could use the holiday accessories die to give him a little scarf or he could have a top hat. Um, we did a bunch of these the other day. These are so fun. They With really the penguins, are. With right? the penguins. The you could put a penguin in your yard. Who hasn't read Mr. Popper's Penguins? There you we could go. put penguins oh. in your yard. Okay. Then, so how about for me, Erica? I think, well, I still think maybe flowers would be good or a garden or, but so one of our viewers had suggested birds yeah. to go in the trees and yours is very springy. And there's this really fun little bird that you can make with the simple, Go Simple Shape Stye from yeah. Aditta Sitar. And I'm making him right here. Making them right there. And if you use different, use the contrasting yeah, fabric so you go. can see the different parts of the body. Yeah. The bird body. Yeah. It's Do you think the bird from the bird and birdhouse might fit on there you as could. well? Or would it be a little? Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's all kinds of options. Um, birds and birdhouses. You could build a little, uh, you could put some little flowers down below. There's, mm -hmm. we've got some little flower shapes that would be fun for that. Right. And. How about this one for you, Erica? The um, the reindeer. sleigh, the reindeer. Here, hand me a reindeer. Let's see. Ah, the sleigh and snowflakes. I could put sleigh and die. snowflakes. Oh, this is a great question this from Miss Ella B. Cute. Hi, Ella. How long does it take a seasoned quilter to complete this table runner? <laughs> Well, based on the fact that some of our watchers had theirs done like the first week. Yes. <laughs> I'd say it goes pretty quickly. This actually is a pretty quick project. I would say it really a, is. We call it like a weekend. Like project. a weekend project. Yeah. Now you might not get it all embellished and quilted in that weekend, but you could for sure get the top of it done real oh, quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So how about one of our projects has buttons in here in the border. Yes. So look at how pretty this is. Are these your buttons, Erica? Yes. I like in these buttons. Yes. They look okay. lovely on your quilt. They I do. I have to let you have some buttons. Look at that. <laughs> or some rickrack, right? This would be really fun. Um, you could use it as a border on the roof. Oh man, if you were making gingerbread houses, you could <gasps> use the gingerbread cookie dye and the accessories. Oh yeah. And you could use rickrack and you could make that would Andy. be super cute. Somebody please make that. That would be super cute. Well, I've got some really cute. Greg, you want me right side up or upside down? Okay. So I found some buttons, but they were different buttons. Oh, I thought I needed to do something with this red and white stripe. Yeah, I don't really know. really cute. <laughs> but look at these. Let me dig them out here. They're like Christmas lights. So you they could are. put these buttons. Oh, look at them. Oh my gosh. You'll see this on, on over them. your house. Look at how like fun Christmas these are. lights. Isn't that amazing? Look at how I fun just that thought is. that was so cute. That is really fun. And sew those on. Wow. Now you're gonna want, if you're sewing buttons on, quilt first, button later. If oh, you're yeah. if you're sewing on, if you're doing applique, applique first. So yeah. but then, oh, this is the best that I found. Wait, look at this. Look what I can build in my yard, in my house. Okay, use your right hand, Erica. So Greg can get a good shot. Yes. It's like a little nativity. Look at this. <gasps> oh. I know, Chelsea was losing her mind over this. Isn't this adorable? Chelsea's oh, helping today. A little nativity look buttons. Look how fun that is. Now, I did not find these in with buttons at the craft store. I actually found them in with paper crafts. Okay, really? so here's my thought, quilters, because er ever since I've seen these, you should make one out of the four-inch cube and make it look like a little crush. 
Yes. And or then, the five or six. I mean, I think, well, but the four would be about the, the right four size. four would be about the right size. Yeah. And then you could just make like a little whole nativity um, little scene. And they had other buttons. They had yeah. the, another set that had the, the three star, wise men and they the, had, so there were three sets totally. You could have a whole set with them. That would be really fun. That'd be fun. Okay. So just think about, I mean, the possibilities are really endless. Mm -hmm. That's right. And like I say, we've seen some really fun ones with applique and oh gosh, all yes. of those kind of things. One really with the have. cute car, you could park the yes. cute car. Yes. You know, pick up outside. Yes, people have had lots of ideas. Okay, I'm going to pick okay. these up because otherwise okay. they're going to go And Emily, wide. Emily's here to answer questions. Do we have any questions, Emily? We do. We have some fabulous questions. Okay. So about kind of going back to, um, you know, binding and things like that. So Jackie C is wondering, do you use bias binding for striped fabric and can you cut that on a die? Yeah. The answer is yes and no. I guess no and yes, because yes, you can absolutely cut bias binding on a die, but I didn't have to because look at this. Where is it? They're so tricky these days. Mm -hmm. You know they what they do? Make it look like bias. They print it. With the fabric. They print it on the bias. Yeah. They print it on the bias. So you cut with the fabric strips. And if you go to our YouTube channel, you can look, look at up that. bias binding. So here's Erica's, so she cut with the fabric. So I just strips. cut regular with the fabric strips and that gave me the bias stripe binding look without having to cut bias binding. Isn't that slick? Isn't that fun? Very so somewhere fun. along the line, our, the, the <laughs> fabric designers got wise to our desire to make that cool looking bias stripe binding. Yeah, the they made it easy. Shop. They made cool. it easy for us. Okay. What else do you have, Miss Emily? Let's see, Ruth is wondering, she's, she's got her eyes on Erica's project and is wondering why the binding is on there without being quilted yet. Oh, because we're oh, actually- Oh, because her. this is quilted. Oh, it's it, quilted. I know, but we're gonna talk about it in a minute. Okay, okay. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll hold, hold our horses there. for a little Again, bit. Again, this is, this is fresh out of the oven and-, and Ready for on the Already blog. cooked, yes. How exciting. <laughs> Okay, do you have other questions, Emily? Yes, um, let's see. So kind of just a general troubleshooting regarding the go big, which is uh, a common question I think that we get. Robin is wondering, when I put my fabric on a die, trying to pass it through the cutter, the static light will go on before it gets to cut. Is there a way to avoid that little light going on and on? Yeah, off? don't put your fabric on the die while it sits on the cutter. Put your fabric oh. on the die away from the cutter, put the mat on top oh. and run it through. And then put it through. That's genius. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Ask us how we know. <laughs> right. Um, Here we are. All right. Perfect. I think that'll cover us for a little bit. Oh, actually, Amelia is wondering, Erica, was the nativity buttons at a national craft store or just local? She'd love to find it those. It was a national. National. Okay. Google it. Yeah. Lots of, lots of folks are yes. going, oh my gosh, where did the nativity buttons come from? <laughs> no, we're we're I inspiring. Knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> but again, they weren't with the buttons. They were with paper crafting. Yes. yes. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So now we're coming next. We're going to talk about the different kinds of quilting methods. Yes. All right. So we're going to make a sandwich. There's no BLTs, which is so sad. So sad. Um, but a quilt sandwich is when you take your quilt backing, the batting, and the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have way smaller ones, okay? Yes. You want to pin them. Erica's a good pinner. She left her little quilting pins at home. I did. But you can get pins. I, Pam Heller, am a basting kind of gal with spray basting, okay? Whoa. So see right here? Everybody write this down. This is 505 Temporary Adhesive for Fabric. It is highly flammable. So when you spray this, you wanna do it outside. Okay, those, those, uh, those fumes get in. It is acid free and it's no stain. And what you do is you take the back fabric and you spray it and you add the batting and then you take it here and but look, it sticks, but it will also peel away. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay? That's great. This is the best stuff ever. And when I'm going to do my big table runner, I am going to start, oh, sorry. I'm going to start from the middle 
and work my way out. Yes. So I am gonna spray baste the middle section. Mm -hmm. Okay. Probably put a couple of pins in there and then do the outer sections. Okay. Right. Because you just wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth. That's right. right. Okay? That's right. Oh, All right, so that. Erica's gonna show you some methods here. This that's is right. Erica's um, sandwich, because yes, she's gonna that's show my you sandwich. a different method than I am. Yes, so, and even if I use spray basting, I will still use pins, because mm -hmm. you're never gonna regret putting pins in, never. but you may regret not putting them in. Yes. Keep it in mind. Mm -hmm. So we wanna talk about how to quilt the runner. So I've done some different things in with this one. So you can always do what we call, we quilters call a stitch in the ditch. Stitch in the ditch. And we're gonna just sew in that seam line, and which Grace is- gonna, If you show, use your right hand, it works oh, better. Jeez, I know. <laughs> it's so awkward. <laughs> Greg's feeling. trying to get a good shot I'm trying here. to hold my hand upside down. Yeah. So here's, here's that stitch in a ditch. And if I'm doing it right, you don't even see it. Mm -hmm. Now, stitch in the ditch is not as easy as you think no. to do quilters. Yeah. So you can also do some other things. So maybe at this point, it's time, you've got a fun project, right. it's time to get out of your little quilting box and try something new. So we love this stitch called stat shadow stitch, mm -hmm. which is where you sew around the shapes maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch mm -hmm. just inside, inside of the ditch. Right. Okay, so Erica so is gonna show you right here. I did that with my trees and I also did that with some of these house blocks. Okay, so see how she came just right in the just center Just there? right inside. And I just use, somebody's gonna ask this. Oh yeah. I use this foot, not my quarter inch foot, and pay no attention to the gauge, we'll talk about that later. And then <laughs> I just run it so my fabric is like along this line yeah. to silver. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Very okay. cool. Or you could try some straight line quilting, sewing lines up and down or back and forth. And so um, we're gonna talk, or I'm gonna show you yes. how I would mark that. Right. Okay. So let's say this is my quilt top and um, I have it in purple so that you can see the stitching. Isn't this beautiful fabric together? <laughs> so what I would do is I would start here and you wanna use your clear ruler. And depending on the project, like this one, if I was doing it, I would do one inch sections. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So there would be the straight. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a straight line with a water soluble marker because then I can spray it and it will go away. Right. These, we sell these and these on our website. Yes. Okay. But you I, could also use your ruler to do angled ones too, because you you've got those 45 degree lines on there. So right. you could do angled lines too. Right. So right here is the 45 degree angles and you could do that. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna come right here and you're just gonna mark one inch strips hmm. and it's super easy and one time in my quilting head, I thought, you know, I don't need to mark that. <laughs> I can figure, I can watch and make sure that's easy. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. No. So if I wanted to do angled lines, um, then I would start here with my 45, okay, here on my ruler. Mm -hmm. Right. I would mark my first line and then I could come here. Yeah. Okay. And then I can just take this to my sewing machine. Oh, I do love a good cross hatch. Yeah, okay. I do too. <laughs> right there. Okay, so then I can just take it to my machine because my machine only stitches a straight stitch. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, again, start from the middle, make sure it's flat and work my way out. Yeah. Okay? Okay. All right. So you're gonna. I'm gonna sew a couple. You're gonna rows. sew a couple rows. Okay. I am. While well, you talk about your method. Okay. So I'm gonna. And sometimes I will do the same straight line. I like to mark my first line with painters tape, and then use. I have ah. Here it is. Painters tape. Painters tape. What what quilting supplies do you get at the hardware store? I go through a lot of painters tape. <laughs> but rather than than using painters tape for every single line. Once I have a first line, then I have a really cool attachment, and a lot of you may have this and not even know what to do with it. 
This is yes, like a seam gauge. I have one, gauge. I had no idea what to do with it. This is like a seam gauge. So if you look at the, let's just call it the ankle that your foot's attached to, there's this hole. And see it's got a screw here? You can put this through the hole. You have to... Puppy ankles. Puppy ankles, there we go. Eleanor was right. And then you can set this up for any distance that you want. If you want it to be two inches, inch and a half, whatever. And then tighten that screw on top. Oh. And this is your guideline. So you just run that along the seam and it'll stitch. So you can put this on either side of your machine, depending on which way you're going. Wow. We need to do these sew alongs more often because I swear I'm learning just as it'll, much as the quilters are. It'll work <laughs> either way. So I brought my Isn't that cool. I brought my foot so that, that I could show you. Such a cool tool. All right. All sorts of fun things. All sorts of fun things. And I, I tell you, there's some great ideas on like YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes, absolutely. You can be fancy, you can be easy. You can do all okay. kinds of things. So here I sewed my cross hatches, okay? And then here I just sewed, oh, my thread got in the way. My little straight lines, okay? And speaking of threads, do you, guys, do you um, alternate or change your thread at all when you're quilting versus when you're piecing? Yeah, oh, I do, I do. Yes, so it, you, some, it just depends on what I'm doing. Gotcha. I did use green on the trees and then switch to a, kind of a sea foamy green color, and I use that for the rest of it. Yeah, I'm not that fancy, I'm just gonna use the same color. Same color. It just okay. depends, Yeah, it just Very depends. Cool. And you could do a lot of different things. You could sew X's through the houses, I did that on some of mine, I did different things. But you could also do some free motion quilting. I don't know, if you've ever tried it, it's really fun, but it does take some practice but it is a totally fun technique. So make you a sandwich and practice. So make a sandwich and practice. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing that I did was drop my feed dogs. Those are those little grippy things underneath. Sure. And m on my machine, there's a button on the back. You're not gonna be able to see it, but there's just a little lever switch, whatever. Eat chocolate while you explain. Eat, eat chocolate. <laughs> and then I have my foot, my free motion foot, and you see it kind of has a little springy thing and is I've that got like that a on term, springy thing. Springy thing, yes, because you still have to put it, your foot down. Yes. Now, I don't change my setting, but this is—it's like drawing a picture by moving the paper instead of the crayon. Right. Okay. Oh. So. So you're gonna hold the fabric. I'm gonna hold while you it move onto it. it, and I'm gonna go up and down a couple of times to basically like get it started. And then you can just go around. And I love doing little loopy loops. Oh, wow. Erica, do you want to cut? I was going to say, there you like go. Like that. I love doing little loopy loops. Some people don't like doing things that cross over. I like doing the little crossover loopies. I think they would look kind of fun in the background of this. But if you didn't want to, you can also do kind of a, just a meander around. Wow. And, and this you is could do this as big or as small as you want to. Now, Pat is wondering, do I need to quilt the houses if I'm doing the five inch cube? Well, no matter what you're doing, you want to do some quilting to hold your layers together. Mm -hmm. Right, so maybe you just want to put an X through them. Right, so maybe you just do an X through the whole house. Right. Your rule of thumb is that you don't want to have spaces bigger than like the width of your hand without stitching. Okay. So like I did inside the border here and then an inch in and stitch in the ditch. So this area doesn't have any quilting, but you know, it's about the size of my palm, so I'm okay. Right. Yeah. So your key with doing this, again, is practice, and it's getting your movement timed with the speed of your foot. Okay. Perfect. So once you get the hang of it, it's really pretty fun. And you can totally just do sections. Just do right. the tree section, and then just do the house section. You don't and, have to do the whole big But thing. practice it. And I kind of tend to go corner to corner so that you don't see a lot of... See, if you go slower, you're moving like faster than you're feeding it, then you get these longer Big stitches. stitches. Uh, you wanna keep them 
a more consistent level. So it's kind of a zen thing. You kind of have to be become one with your fabric, there. if you will. <laughs> there you go. All right, quilters, there is one more method, and it happens to be the very favorite method of Eleanor Burns. It's called quilt by check. That's right. Take it to your favorite long armor and let them do all the hard work for you. All right, Emily, I'm sure we have tons of questions. We sure do. All okay. right, we're ready. Um, first of all, Miss Corinne um, loves the pattern that's hanging up here. Um, just, to let, just to let everybody know, this pattern hanging behind me is the uh, Go Cube 12 inch snow crystals quilt pattern. Love that. Using I do too. The same size as a cube as we're using for the table runner, or for the bed runner today. So you could use it in any size of cube, just adjust the fabric. You totally right. could. And then Kathy has a fun creative question, which okay. I love. She's thinking of doing a table runner for um, her son and family with multiple houses to represent each of the grandparents' homes Hi. from our house to yours. Any idea for making roads? Yes. So make smaller ones probably. I would use like the six inch cube and I would have... Maybe a, do sashing. A row of houses and around the corner maybe one and then the other direction houses. Oh. So it kind of looks like a neighborhood. Like, Right, yeah, like a, and it's all more, the way around. More like a table topper, like yes. a square or a hand. Cute. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be this big, but then you could just, you know, this, there's grandma's house and there's oh, yeah. Oh, Erica's yeah. house and all the houses. That's cute. Yeah, such a and cute idea. And you should idea. totally use like the cute car or Pam's pickup or something to be traveling from house to house. I think so. That is a great idea. Um, Megan is wondering if either of you have ever tried basting powder. No. No. I've never heard of such an animal. I have not. I never have either, but that sounds interesting. Um, I like the spray basting because I, I can determine, you know, how much I put on. It's like hairspray. Sure. Right. And I'm not going to say I don't ever use it, but when I do, I still p do some pins because does. I've learned the hard way that, that that's a good insurance policy to have. <laughs> Perfect. I'm putting my foot back on so that we can talk binding. So that Yes. Okay. And then finally, we do have um, from Joy Jean um, is wondering, can a different weight of thread be used for the quilting? And if so, what, is there a particular weight you'd recommend? Yeah, you can. You can, and I'm gonna say, I don't usually change my weight of thread. I use the Argood Orofil thread. I use it to quilt with, I use it to um, sew our pieces together, even on our long arm, our good friends at Handy Quilter, we have a long arm um, machine here, and I just use the regular Orofil thread that I use to sew with. Right. Okay. Right. Now, of course, this is not. There you go. Now it's not going to go back. Yeah, it is. With it. Yeah, okay. It is awesome. All right, hey quilters, we have fantastic deals waiting for you on our website. Tons of amazing offers. Go right now. Check out AccuQuilt.com/party to see all of our current deals. That is right. Okay. I'm back in business. Oh, wait, I got to get my feed dogs back up. There you go. There's that. And usually you have to like go down and up and then see, they're back. There you go. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so there's one step left. There is. And this one little step, many quilters can stop them dead in their tracks and be the difference between finishing and not finishing their project. Right, Pam? Yes, mm -hmm. it is true. I am so guilty of this. And it's the binding. When it comes to binding, there are lots of different methods, but my favorite is called flange binding. So I have a sample here of it. And what you're gonna do, I have two samples. You need two dies to make flange binding. You need the die that cuts the one and a half inch strips and the die that cuts the one and three quarter inch strips. Okay, so here are my two colors. I'm gonna pull my strings here. See, we were just talking about that earlier. And this, this sample's been around for a while. So. It's been around for a hot minute. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put right sides together and I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch. Okay, now typically when you um, do this, you would fold it in half and print it or you would fold it at the seam and press it. Right, because, and that would be in half. Right, but now we're gonna fold it in half 
and press it down. So now we have this tiny little bit of color. Wow. And keep in mind that the wider piece is the flange color. Yes. Whereas the smaller piece is the... The wider piece shows the least. Yes. I know, it's, it's crazy. Tricky. Okay, so once you do this, all the flange, okay, then I have a little sandwich, Erica. Imagine that. Imagine that. Okay, <laughs> so I... Oh, it has grunge on it. This is the back. I'm going to sew flange side towards the back. And flange side down. And I'm going to stitch one and a quarter inches. Then I'm going to press it away and pull it over to the front. Okay. And I'm going to put a pin in it here. Because then what I'm going to do is, this is so brilliant. I'm going to start here and I'm just going to stitch in my ditch oh. all the way down. Okay, so I'm going to stitch a little bit more so you can see how it looks. And this is so fast and easy. And then I'm going to show you because it looks pretty on the front. Sometimes, Erica, I'm not a pretty quilter or a binder. <laughs> I'm not a pretty binder, <laughs> and I want it to be pretty on the front, okay? Right, so and this I'm, is pretty. It is. Because you don't see it at all, but it's not it's not unpretty on the back. No. I, I struggle. I know a lot of quilters will finish their binding by machine other ways, but I struggle with that. So here I've continued to sew. I've poked myself now three times with that pen. And now look. See, you can't see it on the back because it comes right here. Now this little piece we put on here, but this is what I sewed today. So if you press it away and it's gonna just stitch right next to that. Yeah. It is so pretty, okay? And I love flange binding as well, and I use it a lot, but I have this amazing striped fabric, right? Yes. So I really want it to show up. Now I already cut my seven, two and a half inch strips, and I miter cut the ends. Right. So. So I'm going to cut my eight inch strip and I'm going to show you how to miter your corners because this is my border or yes. my binding, which yes. I think is super cute. It is super cute. So again, I'm just going to rough cut eight inches with the fabric. So, so Erica did not come to my house and clean my sewing room. So last week I had to clean it myself. But Erica, what's happening with your sewing room? My sewing room is a disaster and I know better than to ask Pam because yes. I have been making row house bed runners and I have been making uh, samples for guys that I cannot speak of yet. Oh my gosh, no, please don't speak. And I saw, I didn't, I okay. didn't. Okay. And I've been working on my quilt for uh, Quilt the World 2022. So. Okay. I now have all kinds of colors and all kinds of fabric all over, and I have a craft day at my house tomorrow, so I have to go home and clean it all up. Oh, wow. Well. All right, so I'm laying my fun little fabric here. Make sure I didn't come before that. It yes. doesn't come past the line. I'm gonna give it a good push here. And Pam, once that comes out of the cutter, can we get another shot of the flange binding? People want to kind of see it a little bit closer. Oh, yes. Kind of here. wondering, you know, the um, why is it why is it narrow? Noreen is wondering why it why the binding is looking narrower, but it could be kind of the illusion it's that it's probably it an illusion. So. Yeah. Well, actually, it is narrow, more narrow here. Um, Gray's going to come behind you because. Um, we didn't use two and a half. We That's used right. one and three quarters. Uh, so this, so here you're, what you're seeing is the combination of the two. This is your binding here. And you see when I turn it on the back, around. So this is what you'll see on the back. This is what you're seeing on the front. So you're seeing the combination of the two bindings together. So you will have more bind, it'll, it'll give you more binding, the look of more binding on the front. And you do cut smaller strips. You, you cut, cut one and three quarters instead of two. And, well, and two and a half, you would fold it in half, so it would be one and a quarter. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So okay. and a lot of quilters will quilt at two and a quarter. 
versus two and a half. Gotcha. And then, so when you do corners with the flange binding, do you still miter them like yes. you yes. usually would? Okay, yes. perfect. Drop Margaret. there, turn it. Yep. It's going to come yep. together beautifully. Awesome. We're actually going to do that, but just with the stripe fabric. We're not going to do it with this because I didn't have, okay. the sample wasn't equipped for that. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Miss. Do you have more questions? That was perfect. Okay, Thank Mr. you Greg, so much. Mr. Greg, will you come up right over here, my friend? Greg's helping us in the studio today in Chelsea. Okay, so I've cut perfect two and a half inch strips, okay? And this is the flying geese die. To miter your corners, you need a half square triangle bigger than your strip. Three and a half inch half square triangle, two and a half inch strip, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my strip and I'm gonna put it all facing up, okay? And the way you know that it's working is if you have a little loop. Mm -hmm. You have a little loop in my... Yep, it's got thing. a twist and know that the machine twist. doesn't care. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line my strip right here on this bottom blade of the half square triangle. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you ready? And then what I'm gonna do is, if I covered the whole half square triangle, it's gonna cut right here. Right. Yes. And, you're, and it's gonna make it straight and you will be cranky. Yes. So since our fabric, our dies only cut where there's fabric in a mat, I wanna make sure that my my little strip comes past this blade and I'm just gonna offset my mat just a little bit right there. See I'm that? Cover the diagonal. Yeah, okay. Yep. You ready? Now watch this. And this, just so you know, is the best trick ever. This is the, this is the best parlor <laughs> trick that we have. If you don't have a go cutter, this is why you need it right here. Right. And you could use shape three or two, depending on kind of strip you use from any cube. Right. Okay. Give it some love, slide, don't lift. Now look, it cut off the edge and it cut off the quarter inch, the mitered the dog ear. So now when I take these strips and put them together, I'm gonna show you here on this mat cause it'll work better. I'm gonna be able to sew from here to here perfectly. I don't have to cut off the dog ears. And now we have mitered corners. Uh -huh. You don't have to Ta -da. draw a line corner Yeah, because back in the day. You don't have to trim, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, back in the day you would have to take your strips like this and you would mark it and you would cut it and you would trim it and it would never work right, okay? This is flange binding. And I think we have no, a couple of- flange binding. Or not that flanging, mitering, mitering those corners. Ends. Yeah. Yes, mitering corners. Okay, so the lovely Erica is gonna show you what she did. So as you noticed, we got start, I started binding this one already. And I have the rest of my binding. Whoops, sorry about that. I've got the rest of my binding here and I just kind of pinned it up to keep it out of my way. So one of the questions people ask is about finishing up their binding and we always say to miter those corners so we're going to show you how yes all right here i'm going to move the now i like i way. said i like to make my binding ahead of time and when i'm cutting my project and then go ahead get it all ready to go i save my empty spools of thread my empty orifice spools and i'll wind it up around those just to keep it neat and tidy keeps it from fraying a whole lot, pin it on there, and that's like my little promise, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get this thing quilted. And I love this tip about cutting your binding when you're first making your project, because that's the reason I have projects that have no binding, is because I was like, oh dang, what was I gonna use for the fabric or, you know, whatever. Right, you've okay. already got your cutter out, you've already got your dies out, just cut your binding. Cut Even binding. if you don't put them together, and then miter those ends so that you can sew them together. And as long as you've gotten that far, you may as well press it all together, wind it up and be ready. You might as well. All right. And like I said, the same thing, everything we've shown you, the same thing, the same mitering ends will work with two and a quarter as with two and a half. And yes, there's a die for that. Okay, so here we go. And I, did stitch this a little wider than a quarter inch because I really love this stripe binding. 
So this is about three eighths of an inch that I'm using. And I'm using the edge of this foot as my guide. So I brought my foot with me so I wouldn't get in trouble. Okay. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and sew this, line it up to the edge. And again, I'm sewing it to the front. And I'm gonna sew almost to the end here. I love now, watching this. This is, it's like a master class, I feel. This is master class <laughs> this binding. Is, this is master class. And actually, this is why you all came. Do you have a, do we have a little ruler? Oh, I'm gonna I crank the one out of the giveaway. I'll put yeah. it back. Do you need scissors? No, I don't. Well, I have some. Okay. So I stopped because I wanna stop stitching the same distance from the, the end as I'm stitching from the side. I'm gonna mark her. No. Okay. I'm just gonna lay my ruler here, cause I'm a lazy quilter. <laughs> and I'm gonna go, yeah, that next stitch is probably gonna be right there. Okay, now, hold on to your hats. Cause I'm gonna pick up my foot and I'm gonna turn so that I am at a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna sew off the corner. All right. So here I've sewed and I've sewed off the corner and I pulled it off my machine. Now here comes the mitering. So I'm going to turn Here's myself the magic. around. This is the magic here. So I'm going to fold it up this way along that end mm -hmm. and I'm going to fold it back down. So I'm making it so that it is even with the top and folding it back down. And do so you need a pin? I've created, I have a pin cushion here. This is me. So <laughs> This is Erica sewing. This is Erica, there's a pin. <laughs> so in, when I first started quilting, a lot of times I would put, I would put a pin right along because you can feel where that is. And I just kind of to, to mark it for myself. But then take a pin and put over to the side to hold it in place. I don't really do that that much anymore. No, we've done it enough times that we kind of know. I've finished enough projects in my life. So then I will start right where that pin, right where that is. Of course, I'm gonna pull that pin out of there then. And I'm gonna start sewing there because I don't wanna sew over that little um, flap. Okay, so I've made a little a little triangular flap in the corner. I don't want to sew over that. It's like little fabric origami. Yeah. So I'm going to sew down a ways. And then this is where I started. So I'm going to sew a little bit longer and then I'm going to stop. And now I'll, I'll stop. And now I'm going to talk. And now Pam's going to talk. So no matter what binding method you use, there are certain skills to work on. So now Erica is going to show you how to finish that binding. You want to start on one side, right? Usually the bottom, leave a tail. And now Erica can show you once you've mitered your corners, um, how to finish off this tail. Okay. So I'm so going to go all the way down. Yeah. So I've stopped here and here. Mm -hmm. So. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of this off. Yes. I want it to end right around here. So she's gonna show you how to join these ends. Now there's lots of methods. Yes. And use whatever method works for you. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead now and overlap these two so that I can take my tail that I already trimmed off. It's two and a half inches, so I wouldn't have to. I could use my ruler and lay this down and I want to cut it. I usually fudge a little bit on the smaller side, just because I like a nice tight binding. And then I'm going to cut right along this edge. I'm trying to do this so that I'm like showing you what I'm doing. So it's very awkward. Okay. And then before you continue, Erica, do we have questions, Emily? Yes. Well, we were, we, Tammy wanted a reminder on how, how much bigger when you were cutting um, the flange on the die on the half square triangle, 
she was wondering um, how much bigger was that triangle than the strip that you it were just cutting? Just has to be bigger. Just bigger. So, like so we used at least half an inch. A half an inch. So okay. I could have used shape number three from the eight inch cube, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Totally. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. so we've got our ends. Now we're gonna put them together. So we're gonna open them up. And you know what? This is a skill too that isn't all, does, doesn't always work the first time you do it. So it's something you practice. It's something I keep a picture of on my phone. And it's something I always double check myself. So I have this weird little thing that I do. And I will line it up and I will pin along my approximate seam lines. Hang with me. And remember, there are lots of ways. There are lots of ways. This is just kind of a this little is tip. Because I do it a completely different way. Okay. And then I'm going to lay it out and say, okay, that's good. Because sometimes if you don't lay it out right, you're going to see a twist in your binding. So I will, before I commit to sewing, I lay it out and pin it along the <laughs> stitching lines to double check and make sure it's going to look like I like it too. Wow. Isn't that clever? That now clever. what I can do is leave that one there. And I'm going to put this one over here to help so hold it in place. So yeah. at this point, you can be a good quilter and draw a line from corner to corner, or you can be a lazy quilter and s just eyeball it. <laughs> you can see which one I am. This is too cool. Um, Betty's wondering, do you have to use binding? Are there other options? Um, well, you have to end it somehow. Sometimes people have fabric that hangs over the edge from the back. Okay. And they just fold it over right. and stitch that down. But you got to end it somehow. You either have to stitch it or you have to bind it or you have to do serging on it. Yeah. You have to you have to finish it. Right. Otherwise the pieces and the quilt it's gonna unravel it's gonna on unravel. You. And you've put so much hard work into it, you don't so want that to happen. So much but yeah, self binding, you can totally do that and, and have extra fabric and on the back. If you don't like that, you can go and get um, bias tape. Yeah. That's already, you know, cut and sewn and just sew it on the top. Oh, that's nice. You yeah. know what? Some places even sell all ready to go binding. Yes. Wow. But since this is the year of stripe binding. There we go, yeah. here we go. So I trimmed my extra away and I'm just kind of using my thumbnail here to press that out because now it's gonna fold and pop right into place for me to go ahead and finish stitching it down. See, look at how fun that is. Wow. Okay, and then now Erica is sewing it to the front of her quilt. Mm -hmm. She's gonna press it away and then stitch it by hand on the back. Right. Oh, wow. I do the opposite. I have a tendency to sew it to the back of the quilt, press it away, bring it to the front, and then use a top stitch or a decorative stitch to finish my quilt. Okay, well, I got a little off there, so I'll have to fix that, but okay. I was rushing. You were. So there we go. Don't rush the process. Don't rush the process. So again, you can press that, wrap it around to the back, <laughs> trim all those threads. And then I, I am one of those odd ducks who really love finishing my, hand she finishing does. my binding. She likes to sit in a movie. And I, I like it. I like the process. And especially if I'm doing a quilt and it's winter, yeah. then it's warm and it's mm -hmm. cozy and, and, but I will just sit and hand finish this and then there you go. Wow. And then truly you really can do a happy dance because you are all. That is right. Then you are all done. Now don't forget there's even more tips and tricks on this part of the runner in my blog post today. It's the Go Row House Runner putting your community together. That's right. And along with this post, there are also blogs for the other sections of the introduction to the runner. These posts are filled with more ideas to help make this runner your own. That's right. So while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the AccuQuilt blog so you don't miss a single tip or exclusive tutorial. 
And before we wrap up the last part of our sew along, we want to announce the winners of today's giveaways. That is giveaways. right. Oh, All right. Our giveaways are one way we want to say thank you to our viewers who have registered and tuned in for the show. So we're going to do the giveaways, and then I sense Emily has a question for us. Oh, she has the winners, doesn't she? She does. Okay. I do. All right. So we have two prizes to give away today. Here is our red. Did you put the ruler back? Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. I said, I said I would. A bundle, a coffee Almost. mug, and do you get an 18 by 24 cutting mat with this? This is our first one. And then second, we have this great Need bundle um, by our good friends at the Celtic Quilter. They are a local AccuQuilt retailer here in Omaha. Oh, here, I'll hold it up for you, Greg. So inside there's a mug, a travel mug. There's a clapper right there's yes. the clapper. Erica talked about those. There's wool. Um, there's a little squares. set of Aurifil thread yes. and some flattened spray. You're gonna have so much fun with it. It'd be great. And a huge shout out to Judy and the Celtic Quilter for giving us a prize for That's today. Right. All right, the Exciting. lucky winner of the Rotary Bundle and Coffee Mug Combo is, drum roll please. Elizabeth P. from Holcomb, Wisconsin. Congratulations. All right, and the lucky winner of the Celtic Culture Goodie Bag is, drum roll please. Edna R. from Romney, Wisconsin. Congratulations. West Virginia. West Virginia, what did I say, Wisconsin? <laughs> West Virginia. Quilters, don't forget we have plenty of special offers available for you on our website to check out. To get your order in, open up a new tab in your browser, type in acuquilt.com slash party to see our current deals and place your order. Emily, before we end today, are there any final questions that we should answer? Let's see. Ooh, final question. Do you backstitch at the corners, asks Mary. Oh, when you miter? When you miter? Yes. I do. I awesome. do just a couple I, of stitches. I don't always when I sew off the end, but I always do when I start the next side. Yeah, awesome. Always. That's a great question. Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, with that final question, it is time for us to go get ready for next week's shows. We hope that you're as excited as we are about finishing up your Go Row House Runner. Thank you so much for joining us for part three of the Go Row House Runner So Long. Don't forget to post your pictures of your finished runners on all of our social media platforms. Use that hashtag, hashtag AQSOS, so everyone can see how everyone else made their runners. That's right. We can't wait to see your finished runner, and we promise to post pictures of ours as well. Remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so that you can quilt and sew along more. Thanks again. Bye-bye.